welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming another bossy collab here on my channel with my dear friend Amy Loves Makeup. Now I just can't believe how lucky I've been. I've filmed so many collabs this month with content creators I absolutely love and Amy is no exception. You guys have seen her here on my channel before but it's cause me and Angelica and Amy collab on our swatch party videos and those ones are so fun to film. Well, this idea we kind of came up with when we were in New York and me and Amy have never collabed before, just the two of us, so this is really, really special to me. Amy is definitely one of my friends, not just on YouTube, but just in life in general. She's such a sweetheart. I've watched her channel from when I would say she was probably at... I don't know. I think under 10K for sure, but I'm not 100%. Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly when I found her. If it was this year or last year, it might have been this year. I'm not sure, but she's such a sweetheart. Like, she's exactly like she is on her channel in person. She's very kind. She is honestly, I would say, overly considerate. Like, she cares about everyone's feelings. She's a gem. She's a freaking gem. And so I'm so happy to be collabing with her. And it was so funny because when we were in New York, we got to talking about Tina, the fancy face, and how she did a video talking about ABH. And at the close to the end of the video, Tina says something to the effect of, I'm the clown that bought all the palettes. And she had bought all the Norvina palettes. And she was referring to herself as a clown which then inspired me to want to make a similar video under the concept of makeup that I bought that made me feel like a clown, which is essentially a regrets video, but I just thought it had a catchy ring to it because honestly, these purchases definitely made me feel like a clown. It was like those things that you're like, Karen, what were you thinking when you bought these products? So I feel like I could have like a 50 product video on something like this but for the sake of time me and Amy did decide to just do 10 products that made us feel like clowns that we purchased and I will definitely be linking her video in the description box and in a pinned comment and on my end screen so you guys can find it easily. I'm sure a majority of you know who Amy is but if you do take the time to watch her video please leave her a comment and say hi say hi from Karen, that would mean the world to me. Okay, enough blabbering. Happy Vlogmas, by the way, and let's get into it. Okay, guys, so this is really funny. I definitely, definitely, definitely felt like a clown after I received this package. This is probably the most expensive makeup purchase I've made because I bought the whole set. And I think this was almost $300, if I'm not mistaken. And I was so hyped because Pat McGrath is one of my favorite makeup brands. And when she was doing complexion, I was like, yes, like, you know Pat McGrath's gonna kill it. I placed my order the day the products launched and basically it took forever to get to me. It took like, I don't even remember how long, but basically the hype came and it went by the time I received my products. People were reviewing the foundation. Some people got them from Influencer and I was like, my heart was like sinking like a ship because a lot of the reviews on this foundation was not good. A lot of people were being very critical of it, rightly so, because this is probably one of the most pricey foundations in existence, other than like the La Prairie, I think. Is that what it's called? Anyway, so this was a ridiculous amount of money. I just drank all the Kool-Aid with this and I bought it. The good news is I don't hate the foundation, I really don't, but I probably didn't need the powder or the primer or these two brushes, which I think Mel Thompson recently talked about this foundation in a regrets video too, and she like looked up the price of these brushes. I think they both retail upwards of $50. I wanna say the face one is like 80 bucks. I can't even remember, but these are not very well made. They're not very heavy, you know, cause usually like the Tom Ford bronzer brush, the Marc Jacobs brush, they feel pretty weighted. Like you feel like you're holding a substantial amount of money in your hands. These could be Morphe brushes for all I, you know, know. And so they're very unimpressive. I'm also not a primer human, so I don't know why I felt the need to buy the primer. Also, this label is 
a very cheap label and then it's a black packaging and it's just like plastic and hideous. This could be something she just bought like in bulk and then she just slapped on a label. It's not a custom made bottle or anything like that. This is a very small amount of product. Again, Mel did talk about that in the video. Plus, I'm not really a huge powder person so I didn't probably need to buy the powder. I will say the foundation is probably the only thing that feels like Pat McGrath, very luxurious. It is a, what is this called? Like a smoky bottle? <laughs> I can't remember what this type of glass is called, tempered? I don't know. But it does have that beveled edging, which is very reminiscent of her eyeshadow palettes. And it's very heavy, it feels good. It feels good in your hands. I did actually wear this foundation yesterday just for shits and giggles to see how it did. And it actually wore really well, I thought. I get pretty good full coverage from this foundation and I bought the shade Medium 21 in case anyone is interested. I won't declutter this for my collection. I definitely feel like I'm gonna use this up and pan it but I oh my gosh nothing made me feel more of a clown than this product in 2019 because of how pricey this was and when I did Angelica's new makeup tag I really regret not mentioning this as a product that had so much hype and then it didn't live up to the hype because I did mention I think I mentioned Jaclyn Hill for that question, but my worst experience this year was the Pat McGrath Foundation, to be very honest with you guys. Okay, so the next product I wanna talk about is something I've actually gotten questions about since you guys saw my lipstick declutter. This is the brand Be Elegant, Be Elegant? I don't really know how to say this, but I got so excited because I saw Angie mention this brand in one of her Will I Buy It videos, and there was a point in 2018 where apparently I just thought, I had like an endless makeup budget where I would just buy anything that Angie mentioned that caught my attention where I was like, ooh, I've never heard of that brand. Buy, like I bought so much stuff. I have an Angelica Made Me Buy It video and I swear to you guys, it's not made up. It's a real thing. It's called the Angelica Influence Syndrome. And uh, she definitely influenced me to buy these because she was talking about this brand and how they have this really cool like yellowy shade and I was like, oh my God, I can totally pull that off so I bought a whole bunch of them. I actually have some more. I just grabbed these ones to show you guys. But I placed a huge order on Belligant and once I got these in and I put them on my lips, I was so disappointed in the formula. I think I just got some old lipsticks because I've seen other people talk very favorably about this brand. So I'm thinking it's just me and the product I got was maybe a little old because it was so crumbly on my lips like you know how lipstick crumbles when it's like really dry and I love liquid lipsticks so you guys know it's not that my lips were like chippity chapped and my lips were crumbling it was the lipstick that was crumbly and it really turned me off from this brand so definitely made me feel like a clown because I shouldn't buy like eight liquid lipsticks I if I'm just trying the formula for the first time and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go on a lipstick no buy for 2020 because I just buy the same color over and over again and I feel like I have all the lipsticks I really need so that's definitely something I'm considering but oh my gosh I felt like such a clown for spending money on these liquid lipsticks Okay, so the next product that made me feel like a clown are these guys. So I really, really love Huda Beauty because I think, you know what, brown girl magic is real and I just get really excited because I feel like her brand is very innovative. She comes out with really cool stuff and I don't know, I just feel like she, you know, in a sea of Caucasian beauty gurus, she's kind of like one of the standout success stories from my part of the world. So I get really excited about her and her brand and when I saw these I about died I was just like holy fuck neon shadows like boom bam get me in on these shadows and I, and I was so excited I mean look at these color stories they're fabulous and then they had a green one and if you guys don't know or you're new to my channel green is one of my favorite colors and I was so excited I bought all three of them we also had like a shipping debacle where Sephora sent me two pink ones instead of the orange one so I've actually never even used the orange or maybe I have off camera but I struggled so hard with the green one which I sent back because I'm like 
fuck that, I'm not paying for it, and I sent it back because that one was the worst. The pink one was okay, but really I haven't used these since that video, and definitely spent way too much money, and I probably shouldn't have kept these, I probably should have returned this, but you can't cry over spilled milk, and now I get to feature them in this video, so hopefully at least you guys are gonna get some enjoyment out of these, but I would say these were like the worst Huda palettes I've ever experienced in my life. They were shockingly bad and I typically love a lot of her eyeshadow palettes so this is really really gut-wrenching and I definitely feel really bad for owning those eyeshadow palettes I just don't know why I buy things sometimes like what my thought process is I just like jump the gun and I buy things and then I'm like why though so I don't know if you guys can see this palette but this is from the brand love Lux beauty I believe they are a indie brand I do feel really bad for kind of saying that this palette made me feel like a clown but these shadows are basically like a satin formula but they have these giant glitter flecks in them and I've never put these shadows on my eyes I've only swatched this palette because I did a swatch party and I was just so curious about these shadows because they kind of gave me the vibe that they were gonna be like the Huda eyeshadows you know those ones in the new nudes palette that she did so I was like really excited to try this and Oh my god, you, it, it, there's just like glitter everywhere. I'm gonna, I want to throw this in the trash, but honestly, I, mm, you know it was expensive too because it was indie. Like I must have at least spent like 30 to $40 on these eyeshadows and I've never used them. I don't want to use them. They're messy. I do like the little palette it came in, but other than that, huge regret of mine. Definitely made me feel like a clown. Definitely made me wonder like what I was thinking when I picked up those shadows. Okay, so this is kind of a fun product. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. What is this even called? It's like the tinted, what is it called? Oh my God, I'm so blind. I don't know. I don't know what this is called, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a hybrid of their brow gel and their pomade. So I was really excited because I love the ABH brow gel. It keeps my brows in place. It's my favorite brow gel, the clear brow gel. And so I was like, this is genius because I love having my brows look really thick and like full. So I thought, hey, um, I love the gel. I never tried the pomade, so I'll try this and then I'll just be able to like fill my brows in and set them in one go. Well, this is tinted and it's in the shade Ebony and it's very dark. So even if you accidentally like hit another part of your face, like it's like a streak of brown on your face. So this gets super messy. It doesn't dry down very fast. So you have to make sure that either this is the last step in your makeup routine or you wait before you go in with something else or like a brush hits it, you're gonna smear eyebrow gel all over your face so just keep that in mind with this product I feel like it could have been better I just feel so ridiculous for having it and I just don't use it anymore because I can't live like this I can't live with the thought of accidentally getting brow pomade liquidy gooey brow pomade all over my face because I've definitely ruined my makeup trying to use that thing so Definitely a bad idea. Okay, um, basically everything left is palettes except one thing, so let me show you some palettes and break it up. So this guy definitely made me feel like a clown. I, mm, this was what, like a $75 palette? And it's Charlotte Tilbury, and this is her Glowgasm Face Palette in the shade Lovegasm. I just don't get it. Like, these powders are, like, hardly pigmented. This is the darker formula. She came out with a lighter version, too. And you guys know this year has just been the year of glowy blushes for me. And I just did a collab with my friend Kaz here on YouTube. She shared her favorite glowy blushes, and I shared my favorite glowy blushes. And if you go back and watch that video, I did not share this palette. 
Um, so it's definitely a regret. It definitely made me feel like a clown. I bought this on Charlotte Tilbury's website because I was so excited and they were kind of teasing it as it was going to be like her website exclusive. So I wasn't sure it was going to come to Sephora and I was so sure I was going to love this that I didn't even want to wait until it came to Sephora because I wanted it. I was sure it was going to sell out and I bought it like a freaking clown idiot. And I totally regret it because it just hardly shows up on me. Hardly worth the price tag. I've got so many other better products in my collection for Glow than that. And definitely putting Charlotte Tilbury on my 2020 no buy list. Like I'm not going to do like a full on no buy, but there are some things that I don't need to buy in 2020. And the brand Charlotte Tilbury is just one of those things that I don't need to do. I keep wanting her to be tan girl friendly, but majority of her products are not. I'm like trying to even think of what I love from Charlotte Tilbury. The only thing I love from her, I have one eyeshadow palette that works with my skin tone, but everything else from her that I've tried, I just don't like. So yeah, definitely made me feel like a clown, all the money I've spent on her. I am done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, so the next thing that made me feel like a clown, I actually have, I forgot to pick all of the other palettes that I bought from them. So I have, I can see them from here where I'm sitting. I have one, two, three, four, five of the BH Cosmetics Zodiac Collection. So I was like one of those people that got on my little soapbox and I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, this palette is boring, but for somebody that loves neutrals, they're gonna love the Capricorn palette. And who am I to judge, you know, what people will enjoy and I still stand by that I think the Capricorn palette is a good palette it's not like you know revolutionary mind-blowing stuff but I think they had a good idea with this series and the palettes were like 14 bucks so like really like how mad can you get about it but um yeah it just got progressively worse and then I stopped because I'm like Karen you do not need to buy every one of these palettes just to have a collection. 12 eyeshadow palettes just to have a collection, just to say that you collected them all is ridiculous. So I did stop buying them. I feel like a clown though, because realistically, I'm never gonna go back and use this palette. I did give my best friend one for her birthday. I just think it's a good palette. Like I think if you want great neutrals, these are great formula to try out. So for that reason, I do like this, but I didn't need to buy them all to prove that point, and I feel really silly. I feel like a clown, and so I'm definitely going to be decluttering these. And just in general, BH Cosmetics, I feel like is one of those brands. Most of their palettes are a hit, but they have such good discounts, it like sucks me in. I was literally on a few days after Black Friday, I think they were having like a stellar sale where some of these were like under $10, and I like found myself putting things in my bag and I'm like, Karen, absolutely no, absolutely no, 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 because you will get this huge package and you won't use any of it. So BH Cosmetics is also on my no buy list of 2020, just cause I have like way too much from them and I already know I really like the brand. I know they make quality products, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean I should just keep buying things for the sake of buying. So yeah, definitely made me feel like a clown definitely made me feel like a clown oh my goodness okay so the next item this is so funny this was definitely me being a clown I got so excited when I saw these little milk sticks and I I think I saw them again on Angie's will I buy it video and I was like oh my gosh those are gonna be so cute I can just like and then I'll have like this beautiful blush look so these are called the glimmer glow oil lip cheek product. So you can use it on your lips, you can use it on your cheeks. I do not like this formula. I just feel like on my skin tone, it's just like, I don't know, it gets like everywhere. Like I want my blush to be, I love powder blush. That's like my thing. I love a shimmery powder blush. I don't think I'm one for oily, creamy products like this. It's just not my vibe. And like, I just feel like they get everywhere and some of these have shimmer in them. I don't know. I just don't like them and I think I spent like I don't know like 20 to 30 dollars on one of these and I'm just like so mad at myself and again this was one of those things where I was so convinced I would like it that I bought it on the brand's website Milk. 
Milk Cosmetics website and so I couldn't even return them whereas if I bought them on Sephora I probably would have at least been able to return them and get my money back because I just don't like the formula. I feel like my blush would go like my entire cheek would be a blush color. My whole face would be like these colors and it just was a hot sticky mess like I... Ugh. I don't know. I just feel like I don't really like these. I don't know if you guys have picked these up or heard other YouTubers talk about them, but this made me feel like a clown because, again, spent my hard-earned money on this and I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You guys haven't seen this on my channel. I don't think... Did I do a Swatch Party video? I can't remember, but I regret buying this mostly because I'm like... Why am I supporting Morphe? But you guys know, it's the thing is, like, I'm not going to play this game of, like, holier than thou. If something interests me, even if it's from a brand that I don't necessarily agree with, I will check it out because I think you can have your ideas and thoughts about the brand, the person, the collaboration, and still be interested in an eyeshadow formula and a color scheme. So for me, honestly, these two green shades like sold this entire palette to me. I honestly thought it was a good deal because you're getting 30 eyeshadows. That's a really stellar deal in my opinion for the price point. I think it was like around the $40 range. And so I was like, why not try it out, you know? I've only used this palette twice, so I can't really even comment on the quality. But the few shades I did use, I didn't necessarily love. I'm also, like, kind of confused about this whole brand owners collabing with Morphe and then doing the whole, well, I could never make something like this to your price point. So that's why I want to collab with Morphe so more people can try my brand. And it doesn't really make sense to me because even Manny just did that. And I'm like, Manny's palette has even less shades than this and it's like 20 bucks and I'm like there has to be some kind of hidden agenda with these types of collabs and it makes me a little suspicious it definitely makes me want to put on like my little tinfoil hat and investigate but I'm not a drama channel so I'm not gonna go there but I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a whole conspiracy behind all of these collaborations especially with brand owners and Morphe I did try their holiday palette and I thought that one was actually really good but this was one of those palettes that I bought and then by the time I got it I totally lost interest in it. I still plan on featuring this on my channel I think at least one eye look. I want to at least accomplish one eye look before I pass it on but this whole video is about makeup purchases that made me feel like a clown and I feel like I've nailed it so far so there is that. And then last but certainly not least, I saved this one for the end because I know Amy's gonna watch this video and she's gonna get to the end and she's gonna be like, there's something wrong with Karen. Somebody please call the police and have somebody go check on her because the bitch is crazy. <laughs> But honestly, a product that made me feel like a clown was the Olimar Cosmetics Reina Del Caribe Volume 1 palette. So everyone and their grandma got this palette in their BoxyCharm in 2018. And no matter where you went on the internet, everyone was talking about this palette in their year-end favorites of 2018. And I was just like, what the heck is in this palette? Like, oh my god, like people are making these shimmers sound like the end-all be-all of shimmer shades. I need to try it. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, I need to try the palette. So I waited and I waited and I tried to stock it. I tried to get it on a sale. Nope, I couldn't do it. So I did get these actually, I got the volume two as well in a like a little sale deal that they were having on their site. And I was so excited to get these because again, everyone talks about how great these are. Well, once I got it, I did give these a few tries. I think I did a video filmed a look with this guy because this one was a newer palette at the time. And I tried it and I didn't love it at all, actually. I thought it was okay, but I didn't think this was like revolutionary by any means. So I'm just kind of like, left feeling very idiotic because I'm like why did I just like listen to everyone else's opinion and just not trust my instinct where I was very unsure about the hype with the brand and yeah I don't know I've never seen anyone talk about the second one to be very honest, I think everyone was hyping the first one up because most people got it in their boxy charm. And this is like no tea, no shade. I'm just saying that most people probably wouldn't have bought this palette unless they got it in their boxy charm is what it seems like because 
I think a lot of people just wait for Olimar to come in their boxy charm. So yeah, for all of those reasons, I feel very clown-like for buying these palettes. I just don't think they were the best use of my money and you can find them on Poshmark if you're interested in trying them out, even though I just told you that I think they're not that great. Maybe you'll be curious to try them out. So anyway, that is it y'all. Thank you so much for watching my makeup purchases that made me feel like a clown. Please don't forget to go ahead and check out Amy's video. I'm sure you guys already follow her. I, I highly doubt that any of you watching this video is finding Amy for the first time. But thank you so much for supporting our collab and also for being here and enjoying Vlogmas with me. If you are new, if you're coming from Amy's channel, welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I do have a Vlogmas giveaway that is linked in my description box and is gonna be linked in all of my videos in December. So please go ahead, check that out and enter. I love you guys so, so much. I hope you are having a fabulous holiday season and I will see you in my video tomorrow. Bye guys. <laughs>